Hello, everyone, and welcome once again to Skybound Capital's weekly podcast, Under the Macroscope. And uh, those of you who follow the podcast closely uh, will remember that in recent weeks, we had an update from our chief strategist in the London office, Jabir Sadawala, on the state of the UK property market. So we thought as a follow-up to that, uh, we'd drill a little deeper into one of the more specific issues around housing in the UK. And welcome to the podcast for the first time, research analyst in the London office, Tom Wiley, who works very closely with Jabir. Tom, great to have you on the podcast uh, for the first time. And we're talking today about modular housing. So perhaps you could start with uh, telling us what is it and, and a bit more about the modular housing market in particular in the UK? Morning. Thanks, Matt. Um, so talking about the UK specifically, it's an area we haven't really explored much yet, but it, uh, we feel it's got a lot of potential. Um, modular housing makes up, uh, it's a method of building houses where you can bring in a 2D or a 3D unit and then you sort them all together rather than traditional methods which would require building brick by brick or in a wooden frame, for example. Um, at the moment, the UK has been very slow to adopt. I think last year it was like 7.5% um, of our new buildings used modular construction techniques, whereas other places in Europe, like Sweden, for example, up to 85%. So it's something we're not... Um, we're not fully taking advantage of, but it could be really important in addressing issues with the UK housing market, like shortages of housing and addressing green goals uh, for the government. And um, can, can you give us a sense of, of the size of the market? Um, yeah, it's uh, sort of somewhere around, well, globally, 120 billion. US, USD. It's it's a big it's a big market, and it looks like it's growing anywhere between four and a half and six and a half percent a year. So there's definitely there's no doubt it's going to get bigger. Um, and in a way, it's just to do with labelling, and uh, these techniques have been used for thousands of years in various forms. But it's getting our heads around using them in the modern day and uh, getting building companies to start using them on a regular uh, pattern. And, and Tom, if we rewind a bit to some of Jabir's comments on the podcast a few weeks ago, uh, one of the key things was how in many areas in the UK, demand is simply outstripping supply. So why is this uh, modular housing market so important to the UK? Can you give us a sense of, of that importance uh, for the UK going forward? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's uh, the UK, we've had a housing shortage for years now. It's always, it's always a bit of a, a headline for the newspapers. Um, the government's been trying to build 300,000 homes a year, which it hasn't hit that target. A lot of those homes need to be um, affordable housing as well, which means certain uh, uh, economic standards. So, we're not hitting those targets and with con modern construction methods and the cost of construction going up, um, supply is actually falling below demand. So we need a, something quite radical to update the way we build houses, um, the speed we build them, and as well as that, in order to be energy efficient and meet the government goal of net zero by 2050, we're gonna have to do it in a different way. Um, so the main advantages of modular building is efficiencies in terms of speed and materials, and also efficiencies in terms of uh, the, the building itself once it's put together, because you can be that much more accurate when you're not building on site. Um, so the UK market, yeah, is particularly vulnerable uh, to shortages of housing. And if we don't address it with a method like this, uh, we're gonna struggle to meet the goals that we set for ourselves. And talk to me about energy consumption uh, as a factor mm. here as well and, and effect on climate generally. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the UK has been quite, uh, we, we've taken good steps towards uh, sorting things out. Um, but 
construction industry, for example, housing alone contributes around 23% of the UK total of emissions. Um, not only that, but uh, but the building process as well is also very damaging uh, due to waste building materials. You can't necessarily budget exactly how much you're gonna need on site. Um, producing concrete alone is very uh, uh, damaging to the environment. So there's lots of small pockets and areas where we can improve. And if you can uh, streamline that building process, for example, using modular techniques mm. and building in a factory in a controlled environment, the emissions can be reduced drastically um, and actually might put us in a good position to uh, reach our goals. Yeah, well, Tom, you've raised some very interesting points in in your research reports. I mean, there are direct uh, gas emissions from from buildings. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm reading here around 17 percent of the UK total in in 2019. Also, indirect emissions, direct building CO2 emissions, uh, buildings alone being responsible for 59 uh, percent of UK electricity consumption. These are big numbers so how does modular housing address these issues and and what are the yeah. advantages for the uk going forward so in terms of um co2 emissions alone modular housing can be up to 40 percent more efficient and that's through uh some of the ways i've spoken about just the house being more efficient in itself better built better sealed um, and also through the process of building um, the main, uh, the main area that we need to improve in the UK to reach our net zero is heating. So sort of some, something like 70% of our budget in terms of getting down to net zero will be for heating. So making those homes more efficient is absolutely essential. Um, and that coupled with meeting housing demand as quickly as possible, it seems like it, uh, quite an obvious route to go down. And I think people are beginning to head in that direction um, and hence the speed of growth in, in this part of the market. And I suppose it, it's more time efficient from a, a building process uh, point of view. Yeah, absolutely. So modular homes, obviously it will vary depending on the site and the construction and that sort of thing, but you can save up to 50% of the time because when you're uh, building a brick and mortar house, you've got to do the foundation. You have to wait for that to, to, to cure and then you can start building and it's all brick by brick process, step by step. Whereas with modular construction, because it's in a factory, all the separate parts can be going on at the same time. So while you're sorting the foundation out on the site and getting that ready, the house can be built. And then simultaneously it all goes up. And, and I suppose that's got a positive impact on health and safety issues as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, in the construction industry, we lose hundreds of thousands of work days every year just due to accidents and problems on site um, and workers not being able to come in. And uh, the controlled environment of a factory means you don't have that happening nearly as much. Um, so in, just in terms of efficiency in almost every regard, because you're producing your buildings in a controlled environment, uh, the whole process becomes much more efficient. And we won't have as many fatalities as well, which does happen unfortunately in construction on a regular basis. So you've identified a lot of positives here, Tom, a lot of reasons for uh, the UK to adopt uh, this relatively new way of, of doing things. But with the positives, there have to be some pitfalls. I mean, what, what are the barriers uh, to this particular part of the property market taking off? Yeah, uh, absolutely. It's, it's sort of, you, you, when you look at it, you'd think it, it was the most popular thing already. But um, there's a big uh, sunk cost you've got to put in uh, to get this going. Because if, if you're a, if you're a um, building company, you need to have a factory to do this. Um, and so that initial outlay has been a big barrier uh, to date, um, stopping some of the bigger companies getting into it. However, I think pe people are starting to go in that direction now. And there has been lots of investment from abroad and from um, domestic companies. Um, Legal in general is building factory outside Leeds. Um, they're sort of venturing into modular homes. Um, 
and Berkeley Homes has also announced to open a factory and various other really big um, building companies in the UK. So it has, the, they have dragged their heels a bit because there's a big changeover as well in terms of skills. Mm. You know, if you're a traditional um, bricklayer, there might not be as much work for you now. But that said, most of the skills can be transferred over to a factory and uh, working safer and more regular hours um, doesn't seem like a bad thing. Certainly not. Uh, Tom, from what you've outlined here on, on the podcast, it's certainly something to keep a very close eye on as, as the market develops. But it sounds more like a must-have uh, than a nice-to-have. Surely this has to be the way forward, particularly in the UK, given uh, the supply shortage in the short to medium term. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, the speed of building at the moment We've been falling short of our targets every year by, uh, I think the charity Shelter said 1.2 million affordable homes are still needed in the UK. We're not going to, we won't reach those goals with, our, with traditional building methods. Um, I was reading this morning, there's a, there's a shortage of skilled workers in the building industry now. That's to do with a number of factors, um, but as a result, the cost of labour is going up and the cost of buildings going up. So we really do need to look again at how we're, how we're doing things um, and make it work more efficiently. Um, yeah, to meet, to meet our goals, otherwise we're not going to. Yeah, well, they say that uh, in every crisis lies opportunity. This seems to be a particularly interesting one. Uh, as we said in past podcasts, there is this housing shortage in the UK and here is a potential solution. Uh, to solve some of those problems. So Tom, uh, really good to have you on the podcast for the first time. Thank you for those insights. Certainly a sector that we'll be keeping a close eye on across the Skybound Capital Research team. Don't forget, you can download uh, the Under the Macroscope podcast at Apple, Spotify, and the Google podcast platform for Android. And all past editions of Under the Macroscope are available at www.skyboundcapital.com. Till next time on Under the Macroscope, have a great week.